Now, from that story, in the southeast to the south-south, where communities in Delta State are also facing tough times as the state government and the Red Cross are battling to curb various epidemics uh, following the floods that have rendered many homeless and left farmlands destroyed. However, any progress has been impeded by the reluctance of some residents to relocate to the temporary relief camp as they want to salvage the little that's left of their livelihood. When there's nowhere to go. This is the question residents of communities affected by flood in Delta State are asking the state government. Although there's a temporary relief camp set up to accommodate those rendered homeless by nature, leaving their livelihood behind is not easy. There is no work for us to do that because of our our farm and the, our other our cassava they are here so we cannot leave them like that. This is the only work we have to do here, so that's why we are staying behind. So I know that day 2012. It was like this in 2012. Those affected were told to write down their names. And since then nothing has been done. So okay then the my family is also affected by this year's flood. For three weeks, they have not been to school. They are managing in one of the shacks. It's a situation the state sees as a headache. Bringing them out has been a, 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 you know, a huge challenge. We were not able to because some of them just felt, oh, they want to come and start using us to make money. The last time, 2012, they didn't give us what they gave to us, no money. They returned home empty-handed and all that. So they were resistant. They refused to come. So even when you go there, you see them on, hanging on top of trees, some with different, different places. They just hang. The children, they took them somewhere to hang them. The, the ones that are in the water, their legs are rotten. Still, they refuse to come out. That and also the fear for their health. They've been infected so much with this fungal infection because of the terrain. The environment that they came from is uh, very, very unhygienic. So some of them were rushed here with uh, frequent stooling and vomiting. And this fungal infection also. The malaria, we've been taking care of them as per the malaria case also. And they've been responding. So we are now appealing that if you can help all the, the government should help to push in drops for us to this place because actually we are really handicapped of it. For those whose homes fall on the way of drainage lines, the government says demolition looms for those properties. Uh, it's there in the land use act. You can um, acquire a place. The government can acquire any land whether it's yours or not because the land is self resided in the governor. It will be acquired from you, and a, a, a reasonable compensation will be paid thereof once it's for the interest of the generality of the people. There is no doubt that the government is doing all it can to solve the problems the people are going through. What is most important is sincerity of purpose to achieve the desired result. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. The Delta State government has continued to call on residents of areas likely to be affected by flood to start moving out immediately to upland or other safe areas. Well, this call was made by the Committee on Flood, constituted by the governor himself, Ifanyo Koa, and headed by the Deputy Governor, Kingsley Otuaro. Uh, in order to assess their preparedness to shoulder emergencies in the state, the interactive stakeholders meeting with members of the communities already affected by the flood had in attendance security agencies, state emergency management agency, SEMA, the National Man Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, National Orientation Agency, amongst others. The situation is quite challenging and um, so far we have internally displaced persons camp in the Asaba Township uh, uh, Stadium, the indoor halls, as well as in Opai, uh, Kuala, and many other places. And we do haul in our power as a state government, owing the duties to protecting lives and properties of our citizens. We hope to do our very best to ensure that uh, we bring succor to uh, our communities and their people. The water level is rising. 
Um, but we need to do a little more advocacy. The Commissioner of Information is doing quite a lot in that direction. The people, because of their nostalgia, um, promote their attachment to the environment, who, some of them are holding back in leaving the flood prone areas and uh, we're doing a lot of advocacy to persuade them to come to the internal energy place persons camp so that we can properly attend to them and um, put the necessary things in place. Well, staying with a similar subject, uh, farmlands and rural settlements in the riverine area of Ogota, local government area of Imo State, have been submerged by a rampaging flood. Now, residents are appealing to the federal government to come to their rescue and alleviate their sufferings. This next report takes a look at the plight of the people and the effects of the flood on the communities. Oguta, a town on the east bank of Oguta Lake, the largest natural lake in Imo State, southeast Nigeria. <laughs> The area was one of the first to be used as a base by the British to advance into the Igbo hinterland. It's also one of the major oil producing area in the state. The presence of the lake, a tourist attraction, gives an added advantage to the locality. Because of the topography, each rainy season brings some kind of flooding to the area. But this year's is extraordinary. Houses submerged in water and no sign of the track roads, all covered by the flood. Vehicles have no option but to wade through it. Residents are ejected from their homes by the flood. Their only means of escape out of this area is using canoe. We have dodged ourselves to escape and come to the road. If we have any means to go to the camps, you can see what has happened there. Uh, we would all like the government to help us, assist us in getting some boots to help us bring some of our products and our properties there in the camps. Farmlands are also affected by the rampaging flood. The whole farms are submerged by water. The whole, by both cassava farms, uh, farm yams, even human beings. Many people are stranded right now as I'm talking to you now. The whole place, um, many of the camps are surrendered by water. The only, the only way out is this, this, canoe, this local canoe now. And this is the only way the government help us. Like we have no water to drink now. No water to drink except this type of water, which is uh, somehow uh, polluted. A lawmaker from the community is also worried about the situation and wants quick intervention. This road you see now leads to Anambra State. But as you can see, it's been overtaken by the flood. It's just like this one you're seeing this way. So the people who live there for now, from, 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 from the record I have now, is that over six people are unaccounted for. We don't know if they are if they have drawn. We don't know if they are missing. We don't know what is. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know their whereabouts. So we are urging the federal government to come to the aid of the people of Uguta in Imo State. The Nigerian Emergency Management Agency NEMA and the Red Cross, who are in the locality on an assessment tour and rescue operations, warn residents to leave. About 60 houses have already been submerged, and and we've already told those residents not to go back there. From all indications, the water has started increasing. And what I'm advising people in this Oguta is to start living immediately. You should start living to upper land because this water, as you are seeing it, is gradually coming because the Cameroonian government has already started raising water from their dam. Beyond the expected help from the federal government, measures must be put in place to ensure that the scourge of flooding in Oguta is controlled. Well, new commissioners and special advisors have been sworn in in Lagos State with a charge by the state governor, Akimumi Ambode, uh, to ensure, to work round the clock and ensure that the state fulfills its potentials. Speaking at the well attended ceremony held at the Adeyemi Bera Auditorium, Alausa Secretariat, Governor Ambode reminded the new appointees that their primary allegiance is to the people of the state. The governor said that the state is currently experiencing rapid urbanization. And thus requires hard-thinking solutions to develop befitting infrastructure.
to cater for the ever-increasing population. Well, that's it on the programme today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jocka Rogers. Bye for now.